this presentation of the workshop of the second year we are running the, the Lego Robotics workshop. The mind structure that you need to, to be a musician, or at least part of the musicians, is also um, a mathematician mind and a chess. So uh, music, uh, mathematics and chess are very um, uh, intimately related. Right? There are many of uh, music students that are very good at chess and, and mathematics. There are others that have maybe also a, a more, um, you know, language-oriented mind. So it's, it, I think it's a very, uh, a very interesting activity for music students as well as for any other kind of student. Uh, and what is really interesting about this is that it, it, it really encourages, um, uh, you know, intellectual uh, you know, activity. Right. So. You know, the, the students need to create, build their own uh, robots, and they have to program them. So until now, uh, it's been very difficult for very young students, I'm talking about six-year-old students, uh, sometimes eight, not with this type of technology, which is called Lego Milestone, which is the third or the fourth generation of the Lego Intelligent Brick, the, 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 the little computer that the robot has. Uh, there's all the technology. Uh, and uh, you know, graphical programming allows very young uh, students uh, to program because it's not a, you know, a, a textual language, uh, so it's a graphic language, so they have to put uh, different blocks and, uh, and uh, start working with logical structures like loops, like switches, they'll show you a little bit uh, about this. So, um, right now I'm starting uh, to get very involved in, in curricular activities uh, but before uh, starting the, um, uh, the exercise, I'll, I would like to explain a little bit why uh, I think educational robotics is, is very, very interesting and will be very uh, successful, I think, in the future. Or, it, or at least it should. So, who are we teaching today? Okay. Uh, the, the typical classroom <laughs> where you all have uh, learned, and maybe you still learn, yeah, it was a classroom that was invented during the Industrial Revolution, just for workers uh, to do very spe uh, specific and very uh, technical work, right? So those were actually this is a university, right? So this is those were and this is a, a, an industry, right? So this was uh, you know this this model <coughs> hasn't changed until now, and so there is a, the one basic problem is space. How uh, teachers use space, uh, you know, from primary to university. <laughs> So look, the, these those are the new classrooms. Uh, you know, these students are all of them sit, sitting like these ones, but the screens don't even allow them to watch the, the blackboard because there is a blackboard or maybe an interactive uh, blackboard, uh, blackboard or whiteboard. We don't have an interactive whiteboard here, so the presentation will be a little bit more difficult. This is maybe a little bit, you know, it's a, it's a step further. You know, it's, it's very similar to these, right? But with computers. And this is probably the, the worst case, you know. Many, many classrooms are like that, you know. So, what are the new tools? I don't know if you know these two, these two people. On the left uh, is Nicolas Necroponte. He was the first director of the MIT Media Lab in, in 1980, I think it was 88, when it, was, when it first opened. And he's also the father of the One Laptop Per Child. It's a very nice project. Uh, and uh, they're trying to build uh, 100 laptop computers, $100 laptop computers, uh, to bring them to third world countries, even in the mountain, in the desert. And these computers will be for childs connected to the internet. And through children, even their parents will uh, uh, get access to the internet. Uh, on the right is uh, uh, Mitch Resnick, he is working now at the MIT Media Lab. And he was a student of, uh, um, of uh, uh, what's his name, of uh, <coughs> um, uh, Samuel Papert. And Papert was a student of Piaget, a very famous linguist. So they really think uh, that um, uh, this technology encourages brain activity. Uh, in fact, uh, Samuel Papert says, that debugging, debugging is fixing a computer program that doesn't work. Uh, he says that this is the essence of intellectual activity. So, you know, they really don't know it. Some of them, they prefer to build a robot. Some others, they prefer to program the robot. But really programming the robot uh, develops some skills 
that in the future you'll be uh, uh, students will or kids will be able to use them in their current lives, you know, to solve all sorts of problems. Uh, from work problems, from uh, technical problems, uh, even from relationship problems. Right? Really, programming allows you to uh, build a structure in, the, in your mind. The other thing they say, well, um, the other thing they say is that they talk about uh, the spiral of learning. And they say that uh, the problem is that uh, the model of uh, the kindergarten uh, approach to learning uh, disappears. Uh, in, in primary school. And what they say is that it should continue all the way through, uh, even through companies. I don't know if you know, but Google, for example, when they have a big project, uh, they, they have special rules uh, to brainstorm, uh, to debug ideas, right? And they have Lego material, they have paper, they have all sorts of materials, and they get together there to uh, simply think. Hi. <laughs> Just to think. So what they're saying is that uh, this approach should be carried out, should be carried out until university and even further. And uh, the problem is that this uh, stops uh, in primary school. And this is the spiral of the program. So first, what you do is you imagine something, then you create, you play, you share your ideas and your designs, but, but you reflect on those to make them better, and then you start imagining again. And this is a, a kind of spiral. Okay, so what's the goal of educational robotics? Well, it's like the sport of the mind and uh, what I was saying, uh, to encourage intellectual activity. And here you have some examples. In, in Barcelona we have uh, uh, we put together a, a team of students and uh, we were one of the, for, for the more expect, uh, experienced uh, students, we went to international competitions. And this was not this summer, last summer, uh, uh, we went to um, uh, Turkey to the world, uh, the world Championship of the World Cup Junior, and we uh, built uh, eight robots, uh, we called them musicoids. Uh, four robots played uh, xylophone uh, with two sticks, and they could do one, not, uh, one, one um, musical note each robot, uh, but then they could even play, uh, four. If, if one robot plays one note at a time, it's very slow because the, the, the uh, motor has to turn, but uh, they can play two, or oh, they can play four, so it's much faster. And we can play chords two by two. Same thing with the piano. It had uh, two robots playing uh, two notes each one in the whites and one in, uh, and one with two notes in the black. Right. And then there is a percussion robot uh, with a tambourine and a bells and two uh, maracas. This is a little bit the, the program. It's not the program we're using here. This is really um, a, a very known uh, um, software which is called Latvia for National Instruments and it's being used uh, for research, uh, you know, it's, it's, so it's, it's a very well known, a very good uh, graphical <coughs> interface programming language. So the students uh, at high school, they could even go work in companies because doing this, you know, it's, it's quite, um, it's, it's, it's not really simple, but uh, they, they have to understand what this works. The interesting thing is that this can be read as a musical uh, score, right? So here you have the different instrument which is playing, uh, shown graphically, and here you have the, uh, the musical note uh, and the time. Uh, so the, the, the exercise was uh, to, uh, to be able to build a program that can be uh, modified by a musician with not a lot of uh, knowledge about programming. And what was very interesting, uh, they got two prizes in the World Championship. Uh, the best uh, world team in the use of sensors, uh, because the, the robots are synchronized uh, with light, uh, and the, the percussion uh, robot synchronizes the robots plus an animation, and best, uh, um, super, uh, best world super team. Uh, they have, uh, at the end of the competition, they join the, 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 the teams three by three, and they have less than, uh, than 24 hours to build a new choreography, uh, new robots, program the new robots, by the way, it's, it's called the dance challenge. Uh, and uh, thanks to this exercise that was a class exercise, they were able in, in, in three hours uh, to change the music and change everything. It was very successful. This is the arrangement that they, they made of, uh, they were playing Marcuson. So that's the arrangement for the, for the Zyrox. So uh, another thing is that uh, team working. 
uh, for teenagers it's very difficult to understand what team working means. Uh, so educational robotics is very good at that. When you go to a, uh, to a competition, every team member specializes in, in a certain way. They have to share their knowledge. They, they learn from each other. So, you know, alert, the learning process is much, much faster because you're learning from someone like you. Uh, the other thing which is very interesting is storytelling. Uh, you know, you, you, for for uh, male students, it's very simple to build a robot because even if they don't know what they're building, they're starting building. Uh, for a girl, it's much much difficult. They need to to uh, create a story around it and um, and build that, that robot or, or whatever they want to build according to that story. Uh, anyway, there are studies in Germany. Uh, that they think why uh, <coughs> girls are, are not really um, interested in robotics. It, it's just the way robotics is being taught. You know, if you say we're going to build a, a Formula One car, a rocket, you know, a girl might not be interested. But if you build a story, uh, it's much more interesting. And even for for boys, it's, it's also very interesting because one thing is to think in abstract, and the other thing is to have like a metaphor and build your robot using that metaphor. It's much easier. <coughs> Anyway, these are the, the different competitions. This is the animation with the logo. This is the, the, the national championship in Spain. Uh, this is, uh, you know, uh, in Istanbul. Uh, uh, actually, this, uh, yeah, I think this was because uh, the, the the year before they also got two prizes in the world championship in Singapore. So you get to travel, and uh, you know, it's a very interesting cultural, you know, uh, event. So here they are working, uh, trying to to design the new, the new song. Okay, the idea is to learn by playing, you know, there are different, uh, different competitions, this soccer tour against two robots, and this uh, a ball uh, and, um, that uh, sends uh, infrared uh, light, and the, the robots can detect this light and follow the, the ball. And it's very important also that the students uh, learn how to present their work and explain in public their work. I, I think uh, as important as building a program in the robots is uh, the fact that students would be able to explain with simple words and even more complicated words who, uh, how the robots are, are being built or uh, have been built, how they've been programmed, how they are supposed to work, even um, how to make them better. So uh, they have to explain the, their projects in front of a jury, also to demonstrate that they are the authors of, of the project. Uh, this is, uh, by the way, the, the rescue challenge. And there are different groups in the, uh, where the robot has to go for your life, um, negotiating gaps, um, um, getting away from obstacles, climbing a ramp. ramp. Anyway, there is, you know, there are, there, there are you know, enough variety of challenges so as everybody can choose the challenge they, they like the, the best. This is a mixture of everything, and you will see the, the story around it. 